Today, I'm going to show you how to take yellow to the next level. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days here in the Beats Lab in California. We are taking yellow to that next level. Obviously, if you've been following along at home, you've seen the evolution of the Infinity Project on this tag, on this baller. He is such an amazing model. First, we showed you how to airbrush that yellow, how easy it could be. I showed you how to do that power sword next. Then I showed you how to get him to the tabletop and how that doesn't invalidate the next level process if done in the right order. And today, I'm gonna show you how to make that model look amazing. How to make it pop, how to utilize all the effects that we've been showing you for the last year in this infinity environment, which you know is the perfect type of sculpt to really support this high contrast, dark side highlighting technique that I'm doing. Really excited to show you guys the ancient next level painting techniques. But before we get into that, I wanna do a couple of shout outs. My boy, Jim, James, Robert, Matt, David, and Glenn. You guys came in clutch this week. I cannot do it without you. Like I've said a million times before, Patreon is my personal crowdfunding page. I don't do it for money, but it does take money to do this and you guys are making it happen. Thank you. As always, check out thelongword.net, the fastest growing video library and wargaming related content. All right, let's do this thing. Let's grab that orange fire and that Calvary Brown from Vallejo. Let's mix them up. What I'm gonna do here is you can see, I already kind of pre-did it on his right arm as I went in and I painted in the dark recesses. Then we're gonna come back and highlight it, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me show you how I go about darkening these areas. A lot of times you see me using washes. This model is too big, too beautiful, and the surfaces are too flat, in my opinion, to rely on wash to make these dark areas. The wash would look simply like wash. I want these dark crevasses, these you know nooks and these crannies to look like a darker version of our yellow. That's why I'm using the fiery orange because that was in our first blend that we did when we laid down the yellow originally. And Calvary Brown is just a kind of an exciting way to darken it further to make it look like it's in shadow. I don't want to rely on wash like I said because the, the surfaces are just too big. These, you know, nooks, these crannies show too much. I want this model to remain exciting all the way through, even the shadows. I don't want to just rely on a sepia or anything like that. I want this to be a true, nice pigmented shade. So it's going to be more difficult. You got to get your paintbrush right. You got to get your, your water. You got to get the right ratios and you got to be patient. It is definitely a slow process. You will be rewarded for it. Now, here's the next step. We're going to go through, we're going to do all that. But now we're gonna highlight all the edges. So we're gonna take our moon yellow mixed with our white and we're gonna carefully, and I can't emphasize this enough, gotta carefully edge out basically 99% of every single one of these flat lines. I'm not gonna just do the ceremonial tips. I'm gonna hit every line very carefully. Yet yeah, again, another slow process, but it's fun because now you can see your airbrushing start to take hold. Like you were, you know, oh yeah, this yellow looks amazing. But then the second you start painting in these uh, edges, you're like, wait, that's the next level. That's that's simply what taking this model to the next level entails. This model in its current state was ready for a tournament, ready for a tabletop. And over the course of the next couple of weekends, you can easily just start picking out areas that you want to start approaching the highlights. And this doesn't stop you from playing it. And also the way we mounted him on his base and, the way, and got him to a three color standard doesn't inhibit you from taking them to the next level. This is just a smart way to lay your models out so you can play them, feel good about the paint jobs, and in your own time, really just hobby out and paint those edges. Look at the shoulder. Look at that gleam. That's on that dark side too. A lot of people only highlight the bright areas 
We're highlighting the dark areas that we created these exciting transitions in all the way around to the bright areas. This is that hyper realistic, super transition, incredible contrast technique. We're hitting the face, everything, you know, like literally go through everything that you think could be darker, make it darker. Then everything you think could be lighter, make it lighter. You're going to be rewarded for your Zen level of patience. This is ancient Chinese techniques right here. You can see every little thing. We're not skipping anything. I mean, I'm not going to lie. This takes hours. This might be an overwhelming, you know, project to do for some people, but that's why we took it to the tabletop. We got them three colors and you can just do this casually. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. We got most of the armor done. We got all the plates lo like locked in. And now we're going to switch over to doing that dark carbon effect we've been working on. And that's German gray and white. And we're just going over all the dark areas here. And we're just drawing some nice, clean, but super bright lines. The trick to this is you want to go real bright. In some situations, you're going to draw like a, maybe a more German gray line and then go back over and draw a pure white line. The trick to getting this carbon to look like it's gleaming, to look like it's more than just gray, is extreme and abrupt transitions to the pure white. You want to be as you know clean and you want to be as you know meticulous with your paintbrush as you possibly can. And I'm not gonna lie, this is hard even for me. I'm not the best like you know non-metal metallic guy. This is why I'm leaning more on a carbon effect, not a chrome effect. That's just not my style. I'm not very good at it. I'll admit that right here. So. This is about the best I can do with the amount of hours I laid down on this project. No lies. This tag took about 50 hours to paint to, the, to, to get them to the completion that you've seen in all the pictures. That's a long time. Now, that's a hobby love. That's why I still, that's why I showed you the next level video separate from taking them to the tabletop because I don't want you to be discouraged. I don't want you to think that like, oh, I can never put 50 hours in the model. You can, you can do it over the next few months, but it doesn't stop you from playing beautifully painted models. That's the next level process. Where I've gone through every single one of those little like Colossus X-Men style uh, armor plates. We've painted all the tips. We've gone there. Look how good the back of his legs look where you can really see that carbon, that, you know, transition to the white with the airbrush we did last week and then popping it out with the pure whites. There is definitely a metal, a non-metal metallic effect going on here. It's not chrome. That's why I said it's more like carbon. Now let's pop out some accents. We're going to throw some Warlock purple into some of these little vent areas. We're going to start picking out like the magazine on the gun, maybe the, the flame canister. You know, we're just, we're just trying to create some cool accents. And then we're going to take straight up squid pink. And we're gonna highlight in the centers, like the radial centers of some of those vents. We're gonna edge out some of the other pieces on his back and create some fun transitions. Now let's finish that base out. I showed you quickly how to make that, you know, destroyed Panosha guy. I wanna add a little bit of realism, maybe dramatic realism, but realism nonetheless. I'm gonna rely on two technical effects, Typhus Corrosion and Rizza Rust. These are technical colors from GW from Citadel Paints, and these are great for creating semi-realistic effects really easily. This almost doesn't have a place on our model, but I do love it because it's kind of like having a rose in the middle of a battlefield, you know? It gives you something interesting to draw the eye to, especially when we have these incredible Tron-like Jade Palace bases. This is like, wait, what? What's going on here? Why is it corroding? Why is it rusting? You know, it's, it's almost like, breaking the fourth wall where it's like shit shit can happen in this battlefield you know like even though they look all beautiful and fantastic you know this panosha guy he's dead he's x eyed you know so that's kind of just one of my techniques i love adding these like little semi-realistic effects on hyper non-realistic extreme you know highlighted models so we're using our sponge technique we're sponging out some of that type of corrosion letting it you know kind of infect the beautiful jade palace base just coming around nice and easy as we build up the typhus corrosion and that's just a random pluck and pull piece of foam i'm going to start building up the thick typhus corrosion around the edges and then how it's pulling up there at the bottom that's perfect to come back in with the sponge and dimple it out like we do there it is looks fresh looks easy this can be applied to vents on you know rockets this can be you know, exhaust ports you can put this anywhere you want typhus corrosion is baller now here's the Rizzo Rust technique. We're gonna go extreme with the Rizzo Rust. There's a lot of ways to implement this as you've seen in my live stream on Twitch where we can water it down and we can be subtle. We're not going subtle. This base, this model, nothing is subtle. 
So I'm building it up thick. Then I'm gonna dry my brush off and start, you know, manually dippling it out, drawing some, you know, nice streaks in. And I can do most of this with the paintbrush. Uh, I love Rose of Rust, can't say enough good things about it. Perfect consistency. Dropping down to a smaller brush, we're gonna start watering the Rose of Rust down and letting it flow into some of the cracks, helping it do what it do, give it a kind of like just exciting look. And like I said, somewhat of a realistic look. Look, I don't know what Rust does. I'm not a Rust scientist or a Rustologist. I'm not a scientist in short. I just know what colors excite me. And the, the theme of this entire model and this entire project is garish colors. I mean, look at that brightness of that orange, the blues, the greens, the yellows, the purples. We are literally hitting every amazing bright color and trying to combine them in a way that's like, a, like it's out of the pages of a comic book. And that has been our goal. Me and my boy, Adam, we are really happy with this. We collaborated big time on this colors, on this theory, you know, and we are really happy with the final product. I did a lot of research, you know, looked at a lot of Angel Raldis stuff. Like there's so much good content out there. So many people out there doing great jobs that you don't have to stop at these videos. And I didn't. So there it is, that base is looking clutch. Now let's do something I said I would do two videos ago. We're gonna use a Reaper color, which I love, called New Gold. And we're gonna highlight the hilt of this sword, which is the only metallic piece we painted. You painted it gold. That was, you know, it took me a long time to decide if I wanted to paint it gold or not. And I decided to at the last second because that's, you know, what I've seen a lot of Infinity people do here. And we just kind of highlight it, blend it, you know, take our time like the rest of the model into that hill. Got a good look. There he is. I mean, he is a great looking model. And there's his, uh, here's his photo gallery where he looks amazing. He's looking his best. This is one of my favorite models I've ever painted. This is some of my best work. And it goes to show if you slow down, do the research, put the time in, get your hobby fix in, you can really do some amazing work. Don't forget to check out how we painted those bases. Go back, check out the Power Sword video. Obviously, you need to go all the way back in time and see how we laid down the yellow to begin with. And of course, you go on to check out the video on how to bring this model to the tabletop. Anyway, thanks for watching, players. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.